right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. We have a fun little project here. The the 4020 power shift that doesn't know what gear it's in. And so it's kind of <laughs> kind of a fun one when when you're in park is third gear forward, when you're in forward neutral is third gear forward, reverse neutral is third gear reverse. Uh, first gear forward is third, second gear forward is fourth, third gear forward through sixth is normal, seventh is third, eighth gear. When you put it into eighth gear, you are actually back into fifth gear. And I verified that uh, with the pressure ports underneath the transmission. Um, so in diagnosing these power shift transmissions, um, you record the oddities, you know, so okay, eighth gear, when we put the lever into eighth gear, uh, it, it drives, it feels like a fifth gear, so I went back to fifth gear and like, yeah, it feels the same speed, so in fifth gear I slapped the lever to eighth gear and nothing changed. <clears throat> so okay, eighth gear thinks it's in fifth gear, and how we do that is... <clears throat> Down below here, there's pressure ports. There's three plugs to the left, and then two two plugs, the one I'm on and one behind it, and then a couple ports on the shift valve housing there. So then what we do is we go to the book, and the book will tell us our chart of clutch packs. So fifth gear is C2, B1, B4. Eighth gear is, is C1, C2, and B4. <clears throat> so we pressure check C2, B1, and B4 when we're in eighth gear and them clutch packs turned on, which means we verify that it is truly fifth gear that we're in. The only way, the only way that I can see right now for that to be possible is a gasket has to be leaking or something is in that shift valve housing. I do not believe at this point that the planetary pack in the rear end. <clears throat> so here we got our, there's your clutch split. So like on a, a dry clutch, there's your flywheel and your dry clutch. That's in this housing, but on a power shift, there's just a torsion plate You'll see it. it. It looks just like a dry clutch, except there's no fingers. Well, actually, on the 4020, there is fingers, but it's not used with the clutch pedal. Your clutch pack in here is your clutch pedal. So you got your C1, C2, PTO, transmission pump, everything in this clutch pack. Under this is your transmission, your planetary pack that makes your speeds. <sighs> At this point, there's n nothing telling me that there's anything wrong with that stuff. Uh, this might be a series of work. So what we're going to do today is drop the oil, take that shift valve housing off, <clears throat> see if we can't find a broken gasket. We're going to split it at the clutch housing, pull C1 and 2 out. When I pulled the test plug out, this came out of C1 and 2 port, a plug of, <clears throat> that's metal filings, fines, plug, and that's not good. <laughs> so let's split it at the clutch housing. So we're going to pop the sheet metal off, get the hood lifted up on top of the muffler like I, I did there, and then because we got your steering lines coming up here, and we got a pressure line up here. Um, so we get the hood lifted up, get our stands underneath, let's get him split, and then, uh, and see what we find on that C1 and 2, and the C1 and 2 clutch in here, them are the ones that when you operate the clutch pedal, C1 and 2 are your actual clutch ones, so if you're feathering the clutch a lot, you know, trying to hook up the wagons and whatnot, <clears throat> them are the ones that do all that work for you. Uh, one thing with these power shifts, that little lever back there is your toe. So forward position like that is toe disconnect. So if you ever have a dead power shift, just move that lever forward on the on the 30 series and later series. It'd be under the cab back here on that side. 
a um, little lever back there. But yeah, so let's get this thing ready to split and uh, go from there. Well, we got our split. Um, like I said before on the other split videos, there really isn't nothing to show because it's just anything that crosses this line has to be disconnected to stay with the appropriate half. Um, on the 4020s, you got this disconnect lever. So way back up inside there, you've got a wonderful roll pin to try and sneak out of there and cotter pin to sneak out of there. We just got a hook. I just got a hook that snags the, the eyelet of the cotter pin and pulls it out. So here's the clutch pack, C1, C1, 2, PTO. Transmission pump is between these two castings. It's got these bolts loose. So we'll just take it off and lay it out. So I usually PTO, C2, C1 kind of deal and then get this other front end apart. So there's PTO, center housing, C2, C1. There's a snap ring right here. Gotta take that snap ring out. And then this whole hub will lift off. I need both hands. That hub will lift off and then you can unbolt. There's your pump housing. This one looks gorgeous. The gears look gorgeous, really nice. So C1 is warped all the heck. You can see it instantly because of your wear line. You can see the difference in color and then how they sit, that gap. So them are, them are buckled. C2 isn't too bad. They're at the bottom end of specs, but they look really good. We'll probably reuse them. Well, here we are. <clears throat> Got that shift valve assembly off of the right hand, underneath the right hand battery box. Half a dozen bolts, couple pipes. It's off. There, there's really nothing to show there. Um, this one, the gaskets were caked or just stuck so hard that I had to get a chisel behind that steel plate to tear that away from the gasket and to flex the plate enough to get this aluminum housing to pop off. Um, this is a thousand dollars. You're not going to take a chisel to the backside and mar that soft aluminum. This is $110 or whatever it is. We can easily flex that, sacrifice that to flex to get this off. Um, so these are some of your shift valves. And so, um, Let's, let's just say, you know, C1 and B3 and C2, B4 kind of deal. Um, and the one thing that I noticed is two of them, these N2, were froze solid. That the springs can't even push them down into place. They're supposed to go way down. You push that spring in there and the valve went way down. Um, that one, it's not moving down. So they're still the very stuck in that housing so we'll have to clean them bores up and then see if we can't get them valves to move freely and that would explain why when you put the selector lever in a gear it runs in a different gear because them valves are staying in the other gear so we'll get that cleaned up get that operating normally and then uh, <clears throat> tomorrow morning i'll pull this this housing off and uh, clutch housing off because there's <clears throat> some shift valves in there as well. Get that stuff all cleaned up and uh, get everything just moving again properly and then get everything, all the gasket surface cleaned up and the C1 and 2 put all back together and uh, we'll go from there. 9420 parts are starting to show up. So the exciting news is the crankshaft that we saw that little blemish, the machine shop said it, it passes their inspection. The crank looked really good. Uh, so then we knew we could order a kit because the bearing, we knew what size bearings to get. Uh, when you order a kit, if, the, if they had to cut the crank, then you order a kit with, you know, 10 under whatever bearings. So we ordered, <laughs> we were able to order the kit, standard size bearings, everything looks good. So the kit just showed up, so I fish out one wrist pin 
and one one wrist pin and uh and then the six wrist pin bushings and they the six bushings and they will go to the machine shop and the machine shop will put them on their fancy sun and rod machine and they'll size them uh the head bad news on the head uh it was it was cracked in several places apparently these heads are notorious for cracking because we we found a machine shop that can fix the head and we're like you know can you are you guys familiar with working on these heads or what's the deal and the guy laughs he's like ah, i got 16 of them ahead of you I'm like 16 16 heads off of a series of john deere engines that that doesn't speak quality. That does not say we're a high quality head design. Um, but they are able to fix it. They're 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 gonna weld the, the cracks up and and new valve seats, guides, new cam bushings, get it, you know, fuel cups and everything. It's it should be spot on, good to go ahead when we get it back. Um but they're they're delayed down there, like everybody's delayed. And so in the meantime, hopefully it'll only take a couple days to get them bushings to the other machine shop to get the rods done. And then maybe as soon as next week, we might be able to start working on the bottom end. It'd be nice to get the block on the stand and get, um, get the bottom end in, the crank, oil pump. All that kind of stuff, pan on, front timing cover, you know, all that stuff. Get it on, get the engine back up into place. So then all we have to do is is uh, fly the head up over here with the hoist and, and set the head down. And then button it up from there. And so, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully next week we can start making progress on that guy. Um, so we got new head bolts are in a box. Rod bolts are there. Uh, we got to order main cap bearing bolts. Everything is torque to yield and all torque to yield bolts you have to replace. Um, it's that little kind of stuff that just really adds up on cost on this thing, but... Um, yeah, that is just a monster, massive cam. I mean, when you look at it to the size of my boot, that is a massive, massive cam. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited to get that going. And so, yeah, I'm glad on the 4020 I found some sticky valves. So it gives me hope that uh, we'll get that problem fixed. And 4020 later this week can be done and, and shifting like normal, shifting like normal. 4320 has a mystery leak. Customer said if it runs long enough, it starts to create a little oil trail behind it. And I had it running outside for a couple hours with a jumper hose in the back, got that oil good and hot to where when you touch the transmission casting, um, it, it was good and warm and that was good hot oil. And all I was getting was a couple drips, but the drips were clear oil, not engine oil. Also, if it was engine oil, you would see behind the flywheel oil residue, and there's none there. Um, so on the 4320 and 4020s, uh, there's some piston pins in here. There's just a couple spots. This shaft seal and these piston pins are where you can leak oil and where... This little housing bolts to the transmission case. There's a couple packings on the back side that can cause some leakage. And so um, with any luck, um, tomorrow I'll be working on this one to get this one hopefully buttoned back up together. And then maybe... Some parts will start trickling in for this to start getting this back together. Uh, we are going to pull that torsion plate off and the flywheel off. Pop in a rear main seal. Uh, we're here. The tractor's getting a little bit of hours on it. 
So we usually pop in that rear main seal and that pilot bearing. Um, just, just you're here, get it taken care of. And so, yeah, yeah. So that's all I got for today. Thank you very much for joining me. We'll see you next time.